Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. Today we're in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, August the 1st, and it's a story of Hezekiah, one of the goodies, one of the good kings, who inherits a spiritually defunct uh, nation and he decides he's going to try and renew it. And he read yesterday about how he cleansed and purified the temple, having, you know, having been locked up for years in cobwebs and mildewing. And uh, he, he reinstitutes in the chapter we read today the Passover festival because he, he wants to call the people back to the core story of how God has rescued them from darkness and brought them out of slavery into light and to the promised land. And so he seeks to inaugurate this, uh, this uh, Passover festival, which hasn't been practiced since the time of Solomon. But he hits some roadblocks along the ways which could have stalled him. You know, firstly, logistically, getting the message out to all the people to come for this festival would mean they'd have to start it a month late. Huh. And, uh, and a lot of the people aren't ritually pure, and a lot of the priests aren't ritually pure, so maybe we should put it off for a year. But no, Hezekiah says, no, if we do that, the momentum will uh, disappear and the, uh, kind of our spiritual fervor will languish. We need to start now. We need to start as we need to go on. We need to get the ball rolling because as Hezekiah knows, the best time to pursue God is here and now, always. And we need to start pursuing him from where we are, with who we are and what we've got. And so he gets the people together. It's a great success. They even extend the festival um, an extra week because it's been so wonderful. And it, it begins this sort of renewal movement um, in Israel and Judah and the whole um, kind of Judean a kingdom. This is a transferable principle for us because so often we, we are aware of a purity gap in our lives which stops us um, from obeying and this obedience gap therefore opens up. I remember um, feeling that I knowing that I should be baptised but I kept putting it off the obedience gap because I was aware of a purity gap in my life and I thought oh, I'm not ready yet, I'm not good enough yet and I remember saying this to one of my dad's friends, he said Phil you're never going to be ready. You're never going to be good enough. That's the whole point of baptism. That's the whole point of God's grace. It overtakes us and overtakes our shortcomings and makes up for our sin. And we just need to get on with doing what we know we need to do because um, we just start now and start as we mean to go on and get the ball rolling because the best time to pursue God is always here and now from where you are, with who you are and with what you've got. And so I got baptised. That's a message for us today, perhaps. Are there areas in our spiritual life where we're dithering? Where because of this holiness gap, maybe we think we're not ready yet, or we're not good enough yet, or we feel a hip we'd feel a hypocrite doing God's will now because somehow because of this, and and actually the devil starts sowing weeds in the disobedience gap that means this holiness gap keeps growing, and we become lukewarm Christians, and we flip flop around, and we don't act decisively and do what we can here and now. Is there something you need to do today? Something you need to start now, start as you mean to go on, because the best time to pursue God is always here and now. It's always from where you are, with who you are, and with what you've got. So get cracking.